Well, as New York marks one year since the death of George Floyd, the moment is shaking up the race for mayor of New York City. Candidate Sean Donovan was arrested for blocking traffic yesterday as part of a George Floyd protest. Our next guest wants to defund the police by $3 billion, much more than Mayor de Blasio did last year. Joining us right now, Democratic mayoral candidate Diane Morales. First time on Good Day. Welcome. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for having me, Roseanne. It's really great to be here. All right, so let's get down to business. Um, mm -hmm. How will you fix New York City? Well, you know, I think that's a, that's a big question. Um, there's a lot to be done. I think safety is a big issue. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, things have, have gotten pro increasingly problematic over the course of the last year. But the other thing that we have to take into account is that so too has the insecurity and instability of New Yorkers. We haven't, you know, provided any kind of plan around housing security, food security. We failed to provide health care in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, and so, you know, we, we really need to come up with a, a plan to address in a long-term sustainable way the safety of our city. And that's part, part of one of the reasons why I've called for the creation of a community first responders department. Um, so that we can actually address a lot of the issues around homelessness, mental health, and substance abuse with appropriate responses rather than through policing. All right, so um, I know you talked about safety, so let's talk about defund the police. As you sure. know, surge in crime, 72% yep. in the last year. Uh, last Correct. weekend, 30 people were shot just in mm -hmm. one weekend in New York yeah. City. I mean, yeah. how does defunding the police gonna, going to help people feel safe here? Sure. Well, you know, the reality of it is right now that our, our police department is the most uh, heavily funded um, and resourced department, not only in the country, but in the world. Um, and so if there really were a correlation, a direct correlation between safety and policing, we'd probably be the safest city in the world. Well, actually, um, I think actually arrests are down. Uh, so they are taking a little bit of a, a, a you know, a back step in arresting yeah. people. Which right. may that's, be that's part their, of that's their choice. That's their choice. That's not as a result of funding or, or, or lack well, of funding. Is it also, um, but it's also, a, you know, a choice of like we're in a new world after George Floyd and they're not as aggressive mm -hmm. as they were a year ago. Right. Well, I don't think, you know, I don't think arrests necessarily are the answer to issues of mental health, at, you know, uh, and, and homelessness. And I think that's part of what I'm talking about is the need for us to actually create solutions that address the actual problems. Um, we need to actually increase access to mental health services and supports. We need to actually increase access to affordable permanent housing. These are things that are, you know, ha have existed long before this pandemic and just have gotten worse as a result of the pandemic. Um, and the answer to, you know, w the answer isn't, I don't believe, to throw more policing at the issue. Uh, because as I said, you know, we, we've got the most heavily policed, uh, you know, uh, resource department in, in, the, in the world. So <laughs> that's, if, if there were, in fact, a correlation, um, that, that just wouldn't be as much of an issue. Well, we were the safest city in the world until a year ago. I, actually, that's not true. There is a statistic that were released just the other day that showed that uh, crime last year was, at certain points, was lower than in 2019. I think the source was, was the Times. I don't have the, the exact source. Okay, but, but I, I, I must have missed that one. Accurate. Can we yeah. talk about mental health? You've brought it up several times. Sure. I mean, we had Thrive here. Uh, yep. a, a billion dollars unaccounted for, which is a lot mm -hmm. of money these days, Diane. Yes, um, it is. What would you do differently, uh, you know, with Thrive? Or do you think you need to start from scratch? I mean, I think the concept of the idea of Thrive was, was a good one. Um, I think, you know, making sure that we have hotlines available to people in crisis that actually co connect them to services. Um, I, I think the, the sort of first aid uh, the, the first aid response to mental health um, was not nearly enough. Um, and so we need to actually deepen the, those services, but both both in terms of depth and, and, and breadth, mental health issues and challenges, everybody. There's no one in New York City who doesn't experience a mental health issue. Um, we need to have a continuum of care that goes from the lightest touch intervention to the most in-depth intervention, including supportive housing with for, for folks who have mental health challenges that have can have access to supportive services in their homes. 
um, as well as much more, you know, much more intensive outpatient things. Um, we don't have those things available. And, and the reality of it is that it is, uh, it is only going to get worse as people continue to deal with the trauma of the COVID-19 pandemic and, and how that has impacted their lives. We're not, I don't believe that we're prepared to actually deal with that, which is part of why I've re I'm really calling for the deep investment in and expansion of mental health supports and services in communities. All right, can we talk a little bit uh, about something that's been dogging your campaign? Um, okay. Allegations of bribery to uh, mm -hmm. a city inspector and then mm -hmm. uh, allegations that you lied about it twice. Um, mm -hmm. Should we excuse you for that? I know what happened almost 20 years ago, but should we excuse you for that? Does that say something about your character? I don't believe it does. I mean, I, I think that I've, I've explained that uh, this was an issue, an instance of a citywide uh, scam that was being operated by a city employee. Um, and I was told essentially, I called the city for help when, when this situation um, started. And I was told essentially what this person says will is final and binding and what this person said to me was that i had to pay him 300 dollars um, i was not the only victim of this um, circumstance and so you know i think it's a bigger issue it's a systemic issue and i think that was evident by the the number of new yorkers who responded um, in terms of shared experiences um, as for the quote unquote lie uh, the the uh, the inspectors of the city actually uh, started to harass and, and threaten me at one point and the only real inconsistency in my story was whether or not I involved my dad. Um, and so I, I removed my dad from the second iteration of the story because I didn't want him implicated because I was worried about him. He's he's older, he's limited English proficient, um, and, and he had health issues. So I, that was the only inconsistency. I actually never told the city that I didn't pay this official the money that he demanded that I pay him. That was the most salient point in the story, and that was never that that part of the story never varied well it's good that you got it out here on good day new york yeah thank you we appreciate you coming on good day and we hope to see you again soon good luck in thank your, you in your quest for um you know winning the primary or placing one two or three in this uh yeah. ranked choice yeah. voting and and about a month away now absolutely it's coming up all right diane morales thank you so much thank you thank you